I can remember my father telling me when I was a kid what changed his life was playing basketball and traveling in college. He said that allowed him to meet people from different places and, and uh, see how different people live. I think about it and it's like, wow, you know, you know no, nothing's bigger than that. Thank you and again, welcome aboard. One of the things that's overlooked when you have to play overseas is everyone just thinks about the, the sports part of it. The biggest thing I think oh, that I've learned over time is just uh, living there. Playing the drive through at McDonald's and you have to drive around the left side of the building to go through the drive through. My mom will be tripping when she sees this. It's a few adjustments that you have to make. The cuisine is a little different. Oh, you're, uh... See that sauce, that green? That's, <laughs> that's just butter and garlic. You're gonna want that now. <laughs> it's really good, man. That's pretty good. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, man. I'm a Would snail. I lie to you? I'm a snail man. Would I lie to you? <laughs> Come on, I'm a right. snake man. <laughs> that's all right. You have to, uh, you know, find a new grocery store. Every time you switch teams. This is how you. This how you. Uh, what, what's this dish called? Fondue. 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 Cook your own food. And voila. French fruit one on one. My first time out in Venice, I almost just fell down the stairs. <laughs> I've been all over the country of course for basketball, but also just for when we have time off. I've seen many of the sites, just even being somewhere where you can see all these exotic animals. Man, he's just taking a dump right in front of you, man. It's got mates for life. I've been able to go experience Africa and the Middle East, and, and uh, see, you see a bunch of crazy things, and as well as interesting things and it really opens your mind up to a lot of questions but off the court experiences there's so many of them uh, I, I can't even I can't even count it I've lived in in six countries Fans versus players game. and I've been to over 20 so I think the best way to assimilate yourself is to meet people, you know, uh, don't be the person that sits up in your house all day and uh, you're in another, another country so for you to be able to grow and survive in that country you have to understand the culture. It's important to travel and... So what's, the what's this called anyway? It's chocolate with bananas? To try the new cuisines and, and, um, and learn the language and... Did I say it right? <laughs> Febrayo. Febrayo? What did you say? Febrayo. Sometimes you don't understand what they're talking about. You might even be somewhere where they don't speak a Latin language, to where you're in Eastern Europe and they're speaking something that you've never heard before, not even on a movie. So um, th th those are all adjustments that you have to make uh, on the fly. And if you don't perform, you go home. You know, knowing what's going on, the political issues in, in that country. Having to understand people's religious backgrounds in other countries. These are things that are, can, can make or break your experience or your career. I'm about to head into a couple of these museums, man. Check it out. See what the country has to offer. You know, if you don't know, you know, the proper etiquette in a certain country, you can offend a lot of people and really uh, put them off. For me, coming up, man, when I started high school, I was 5'9". So nobody really believes me, I was 5'9". When I came to Northeast, I stretched out to be about 6'3", and I was the weakest, slowest player on the team. You know, guys was constantly beating me off the dribble, guys was constantly out rebounding me. I had a teammate named Thomas Five. He was a big, goofy kid, just like me. And we decided one summer, we said, hey man, we're gonna hit these weights, we're gonna get these scholarships. And we came in here early, at the end of every school day, and hit the weights, and we would go run. And we go to the gym, we work on the things that was necessary for us to be great. So then when we hit that summer circuit and we went on that AU trail, we killed everybody. All right? And we was able to get some all tournament teams, get a lot of notoriety, 
And that's how you come up in this game. You got to put in the work. Because this basketball thing, man, can change everything for you. There's so much clutter as a professional athlete, learning this language, what your responsibility is on this team. Each country has a, a new wrinkle. So um, playing in France is a little different than playing in Australia. Playing in Australia is a little different than playing in Argentina. You know, so everywhere you have a, another set of rules that you have to adjust to. Some places you can't use a spin move, you know, which that, that cut part of your game in, uh, in half. You also have to adjust to the referees. You know, um, you know, like I said, for me, I've always been a physical player. So having to uh, deal with, with guys who flop and, and, uh, and are very animated, that can be, uh, that's, that's a huge adjustment. Also, just, um, you know, you have to deal with people slapping the ball off the rim. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of little small adjustments like that, but uh, they, they make a big difference. So I think every year um, I'm just constantly having to tweak my game here and there. And I've, I've played a lot of different positions too, so that, that's also a change as well. Back at it again. What's up, social media fam? I'm just behind the scenes at the Hall of Fame. What's up, man? With my Hall of Fame trainer, Terry Boykin. Let's do it. Yeah, we're here. Hard work pays off. We're here, man. Behind us is where we at. Your boy's on deck. Family, everybody in attendance. It's going down. <laughs> Thanks for everybody who made it happen. Love y'all. When you talk about the Hall of Fame, um, it's something that when you're playing, you don't really think about. At the end of the day, if you look up there and, you, and your complaint is, I lost a basketball game or I didn't play good this week, you got a great life. Some people go home, man, they don't have a home to go to. I, I think when you're young, when you're first starting out, your motive is just to go as high as you can go. But as you get a little bit older, you know, uh, you start thinking about life after basketball. To go home and, and to be respected and being put on put up like that at, um, in a place that really I gave I gave everything. I gave everything. Uh, sometimes I, I start tearing up just thinking about it. All right, let's go. Uh, I, I just want to thank everyone in Clarksville. I want to thank everyone in the media department. You know, you all meant so much to me. Everyone that I've come in contact with, you know, whether it was a positive or a negative experience, I took something from it and, uh, and helped it help mold a better person of myself. You know, uh, we put a lot of limitations on ourselves, but um, you know, there, there's so many levels that you can go to, and um, if you move your mind to a, to that level, your body will follow. Clark's billions. I'm on the way home. Yeah. <laughs>